What's up everybody? My name is Brad and happy Sunday afternoon. Hope everyone has had a great weekend so far. Uh, today we're back to discuss some more Edgar Allan Poe and this is going to be the third story in the month of Poe read-along that we're doing over on my Discord channel. If you're interested in joining in over there for any of the discussions, the link to that will be down in the description. Uh, but first we discussed the Fall of the House of Usher, then we went on to the Mask of the Red Death, and here for the third story today, we're going to be talking about The Pit and the Pendulum. Uh, like the previous two videos in the series, this will be full of spoilers for this story. So if you haven't read it already, uh, go check it out. Find it somewhere online. It's only about 10 pages long. I'm sure you can find it for free since it is such an old story. And then come back and follow along with the discussion and weigh in with your opinions down in the comments. Uh, but like the other ones, I'm going to do a sort of a short summary of the story first and then get into my deeper thoughts, sort of trying to interpret what Poe might have meant with this story. Uh, the synopsis for this one, the summary for this one, it's going to be pretty short. It was pretty straightforward. Not a lot went on sort of plot wise. But we start out with our narrator. It's another unnamed narrator and they have been captured and are basically prisoner uh, by the Spanish, the Spanish Inquisition, and they have been sentenced to death basically by torture. And the rest of the story is uh, our narrator gets put in this dungeon. It's pitch black. He can't see anything, and he stumbles across this pit in the floor, almost falls in. Um, when next he wakes up, he's strapped down to basically a table, and the pendulum above swings down, keeps swinging down. You all probably know how that part of the story goes. Uh, he eventually escapes from the pendulum, escapes from that death, and then the walls start to heat up. Uh, the walls are actually made of metal. They start to heat up, turn this blistering, scorching hot, and they start to close in on him, basically forcing him to either dive into the pit that's in the middle of the floor or be crushed to death by these walls. And then at the very last second, um, he is actually saved by, I'm assuming these French revolutionaries maybe, uh, this French general, it says it in the back of the story, I didn't remember his name, uh, but they come in, they free all the people who have been captured by the Inquisition, and our narrator is saved basically at the very last moment before his death. Uh, so that is sort of the summary as to what all happened in the pit and the pendulum. What was my interpretation of this story? Uh, so like I said, not much happened plot-wise, uh, but I think there was a lot of subtext sort of going on. Uh, first, we'll start with that the narrator had been captured and imprisoned by the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, basically, they were trying to convert this person to Catholicism, and it was sort of the mentality, you're either with me or you're against me. Uh, this person apparently did not convert, so they were sentenced to death basically by torture. At the beginning of the story, it is um, he's, I guess it's sort of his trial, but it's not really a trial. Uh, there's these three judges that he sees are sort of cloaked in darkness. But they have these pale white faces and these disturbingly really thin lips. And those are basically, you know, judge, jury, and executioner to him. And he sort of falls unconscious after his verdict, after he's sentenced to death. And this part was sort of confusing for me with the language. It was almost hallucinatory in a way. Um, he ends up waking up in this pitch black dungeon, uh, but before that, it's almost like he doesn't know if he's if he's asleep, if he's awake, if he's dead, or if he's alive. He's almost in this sort of state of limbo in a way. Um, you know, he can't see anything around him. It's almost like a sensory uh, deprivation chamber where it's just pitch black. He doesn't know if the wall is a foot away or if it's 20 feet away. He can't really tell what his reality is at this point. Uh, so that part was a little confusing for me, uh, but once he finds the wall, he sort of grasps onto reality once again, and then the rest of the story made pretty much sense for me the rest of the way on. But he's stumbling around in this prison cell trying to find out how big the cell actually is. He trips and falls right on the edge of this pit, and you know from there some lights come on, and he falls unconscious once again. That's sort of a running theme throughout is him slipping into darkness, slipping into the abyss, slipping into this unconscious state. Uh, once he wakes back up, he finds himself strapped down to uh, this table with the pendulum, the light in the room, 
and the dungeon itself is now illuminated enough where you can see what's going on and you can see the surroundings. But the pendulum at one point, uh, the narrator says that it was like the pendulum of a clock swinging back and forth. And I liken that back to in the story, The Mask of the Red Death, there was the clock in the black room at the end of the hallway. And that one, I interpreted it as every time it would toll on the hour, it was representing death, you know, this this coming of death, this looming death. Uh, this was the same thing for me. I think Poe is playing with sort of the same narrative devices. This impending death, this pendulum swinging, counting down, literally counting down because it keeps dropping and dropping, counting down until your death. Uh, I think that's what the, the pendulum in this particular story represents. Again, it represents time and the impending doom, the impending death that we are all going to crash into, come up to at some point in our lives. Uh, this one, it was slowly coming down. And I felt like his descriptions of that, that was almost more torturous than actually getting cut in half would have been. You know, getting cut in half would be awful, but, you know, the narrator, he couldn't tell if it was, he was sitting on that table for minutes or if it was hours or days. It was just this really arduous, slow, impending doom that he could see coming towards him. It just felt like it was creeping down so slow and so slow. And it was almost like it was, it was driving him mad. Like he would die before it would even actually get a chance to cut him in half anyway. Uh, but there's rats in the room as well. And they've bitten his finger and he wipes some blood on the restraints and they sort of gnaw through the restraints. And at the very last second, he's able to, it starts to cut into him already. The pendulum does. He's able to escape right at the last second before it would have just sliced him in half. And then the walls to the room, they start to heat up bright red. He notices the light in the room is actually coming from underneath the walls. Now there's a space there. They heat up the walls as bright red and they slowly start to push them in on him. Um, so he has the choice of he can either dive into this pit or he can be crushed to death and burned to death by these walls. Uh, with it being the Spanish the Spanish Inquisition um, and Catholicism and you know the Catholic faith, I took the pit to represent hell. Um, at one point in the story, he likens it to this dark abyss. You know, hell is something where you know the pits of hell. It's a pit, and you have that you know saying the pits of hell and the abyss of hell. So I took it as you know the pit itself represented hell, since it did have these sort of religious undertones to the story with the Spanish Inquisition being involved. So it was sort of a struggle where, you know, is he going to give in and just dive into the pits of hell? Is he going to try to resist, stay back, stay alive, and inevitably suffer another fate, another death? But I really like that at one point near the end, he looks into the pit and he sees something terrifying. We don't get to find out what that is, uh, but something that keeps him back. He does not want to go into the pit. He's trying as much as he can, mustering up as much willpower as he can to stay within these walls that are closing in and starting to burn him. They're getting so close. You know, he does not want to go in that pit. That's his last resort. And at that point, you know, he's probably sleep deprived and dehydrated and starved. He had a little bit of food, but probably not enough to really sustain him. We don't really know how long he had been tied to that table with the pendulum swinging down. So he might have been hallucinating things in the pit. It might not have been anything at all. Maybe it really was the pit of hell. We don't really know. Uh, but as I said, sort of at the last second, he hears this, this thunderous trumpeting, I think is what it said. Almost like, you know, heaven itself was calling out to him, coming to save him. He sorts to pass out, to fall into the pit. But someone reaches out and saves him at the very last second. These these French people come in and sort of, you know, break out. Um, I can't think of the word I'm trying to use. Uh, they liberate all the prisoners. That's what I was looking for. They liberate them, and he's saved at the end of the day. I really like the idea that you know the pit represented hell itself. With the the um, Spanish Inquisition, they really wanted this person to go into the pit. They left him in the dark room at first to sort of wander around and maybe fall in. That didn't work, so they started to do the pendulum, swing down, cut him in half, maybe throw him in the pit after that. And at the end, you know, the closing in of the walls where he could either be crushed or dive into the pit voluntarily. So they were basically saying, you know, since you didn't convert, 
to our faith, our religion, you're going to hell. And that was represented through the pit in his dungeon floor. Um, overall, I really enjoyed the story. Again, dealing with you know aspects of time and death and bits of faith, sort of the afterlife and whatnot. Um, if I were to give it a rating, I think I liked it just about as much as I did the Mask of the Red Death. Probably give it 7 to 8 out of 10. Another really enjoyable story. Uh, just the beginning part was a bit confusing to me. Maybe sort of the, the limbo status where he didn't know if he was alive or dead or a conscious or unconscious. But other than that, it pretty much made sense. All the stories so far have made sense to me, even though they've been written in sort of this, this old English sort of verbiage, if you will, this language, uh, which isn't as smooth as modern day writing is, I guess you'd say. It just, you can feel the difference, feel that it's older. But I've really enjoyed all of the, the Poe stories so far. And we have one more left for the final week in January. So this coming week, we're going to be reading The Telltale Heart. So if you're interested in joining in on that one, like I said, the link to the Discord will be down in the description. Uh, but that's all I have for you guys today. This has been my rambling discussion of The Pit and the Pendulum by Edgar Allan Poe. Hope you all have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you for spending your time with me today. Again, my name is Brad, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.